One of my friends asked me to do this movie. You know who you are, so here you go. This is not the traditional Tyler Perry movie where the black woman is fed up with her dark-skinned husband who is the bad guy and meets her light-skinned love at first sight. No, this movie is about a black female lawyer who takes on a murder case and she already has her light skin love. But unfortunately, the bad guy is a dark skinned dude, but we'll get into that later. The movie starts with some old white lady standing at the edge of her home. I guess she's not trying to get the new corona vaccination or something. And for some reason, they don't like helicopters in this movie, so she just jumps to her death. I don't know how I could be so stupid. Hey, hold on a second. You need a crisis response you need here right now. Get that choker out of there! No, 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 no! I mean, if we being honest, the only reason this old ass lady just turned herself into a pancake is because both of y'all doing some horrible ass police work. Why are both of y'all upstairs in the house? The cop behind you should be down there ready to catch her old ass like a baseball or put a trampoline down there or something. This nigga's probably the worst cop ever in history. He does a lot of dumb shit in this movie. Y'all gonna see it later. After working the night shift, he goes home to his wife. She was Mike Epps' daughter in Meet the Blacks, I think. They talk about the rain and his mom's groceries or whatever, and his wife is noticing that this nigga's energy is off somehow. It's probably because he killed the old white woman the night before, but he don't tell her about that. Anyways, like I said, Jasmine's a lawyer, and she's driving this old-ass blue Honda to work, so that should tell you how good of a lawyer she is. There's this consistent chatter on the radio about a woman named Grace Waters who allegedly killed her husband. Ironically, when she gets to the office, she is given the Grace Waters case from Tyler Perry. Here, boss, and he kind of mean. Grace Waters? I can't do this. What about giving it to Tilsa or Donnie? I mean, they are more equipped you to do this. You are doing it. Want it done this week so this media circus will go away. Thank you. But Roy, I... Go. Hey, I'm a fan of Tyler Perry, but he know he had a line for putting that dirty ass raccoon on top of his head. This nigga looked like Ben Carson, but never did surgery before. He didn't even comb his shit. He just wanted to come to work and yell at people with a nappy ass head. After she's done getting yelled at, she heads down to the Holloway Correctional Facility to speak with Grace about her plea. But listen to what this female coon said on the radio real quick. How about our next call? I don't even know why we are wasting money with the trial. Just tie her up to electric chair and hit the switch. Did that bitch say boom? Like this can't be a black female talking. You know damn well black people gonna be rooting for her, wanting her to have a fair trial. Mr. Madea, you kinda fumbled the bag on that one. While Jasmine heads inside the facility, she walks right behind the news crew. She just wanted to be on TV, she could've walked around. On her way to the holding room, she passes the most cliche prison movie shit ever. Like, do people actually think this is what it's like to be at a female prison? Just a whole bunch of gay bitches scraping at the gate trying to get some booty? At least have some variety in there, have some bitches sleeping, doing some push-ups, or reading a book or something. Obviously, all the commotion outside worked because she's a little spooked about Grace taking her booty. So much that she drops all her shit on the floor, then enters Grace Waters. She had a bit of an attitude, but, uh, duh. I'm from the public defender's office. I was appointed by the court. Before they start talking, I would just like to say that Tyler Perry is out of line for that shit on her head. That abomination. Her shit look like some tumbleweed in the desert. And I already know what y'all gonna say. She's in jail, what do you expect? No, because Medea went to jail and her shit was late the entire time. So, uh. I told him I didn't want a lawyer. If not me, then some other lawyer will be here. So I understand that you wanna plead guilty? How old are you? 26. What school did you go to? What's up with all the goddamn questions? She could have went to ICDC for all you care. You just said you didn't want a lawyer. I'm going to ask the DA for 15 years with the possibility of parole. I want to move to a prison close to here. I want to be able to see my son and my grandbaby and no plea deal. After Jasmine leaves the jailhouse, that evening she has drinks with her co-workers. One of them low-key hating, the other one dick riding. They also argue about cookies or something. She baked cookies for kids. She sang in a church choir. She... Taught Sunday school. She confessed she did it. She wants to plead guilty. If you were missing something. What could I be missing, Donnie? Okay, like she said, okay, what could she be missing? You can't just plead her down without knowing all of the facts. I know the facts. With our workload, we don't have enough time or money to even deal with this. What does that have to do with the Sunday school teacher who bakes cookies for kids in the neighborhood? Either this is your cause or it ain't. Figure it out, Jazz. Her boyfriend in the corner not saying shit, he just letting his girlfriend get yelled at like a toddler. Nigga, this your house. After her friends leave, Mr. Police Officer tells Jasmine about the old lady diving off her house and landing on her neck. I'm just assuming how she landed. And Jasmine tells him that she's a scary cat and doesn't want to be a lawyer anymore. You know, when I graduated from law school, I thought I had hit the lottery. These people are murderers and liars. I just want to stay there long enough so I can get these student loans paid off. I don't want to be a lawyer. No, come on. I don't. 
She didn't even give a good reason to why she want to quit. I think she's just being lazy. I just looked it up. It takes seven years to become a defense attorney. She ain't had no internships or nothing like that. You didn't know what she was getting into? Get the hell out of here. She goes to work the next morning. Lizzo still dick riding. Last night I may have one too many. My bad. Well, I think you do a great job, Jasmine. Her friend ain't making no damn sense because she literally helps no one. She pleads everything. After that, a man named Malcolm Waters, who happens to be Grace's son, comes in to speak with Jasmine about helping his mother win the case. He is literally pouring his heart out to this woman about how much he loves his mother, but Jasmine don't give a fuck. After she rips his heart out, she speaks with the DA about Grace's plea. She has no record. She's a model citizen. She has no priors. She wants a plea. She gets the max. Well, what about giving her millstone prison so she'll be closer to her son? That I'll consider. I hate when they put scenes like this in movies. Like, ain't nobody that goddamn busy where they need to be walking and talking at the same time. Nigga, you can spare five minutes, bitch. She speaks with Grace again and let her know the DA wants to throw the book at her ass. And she takes the deal. She cries, kinda. <laughs> And Jasmine feels bad, so she takes it upon herself to do a little more investigating. So she decides to have a meeting with one of Grace's friends. It's Miss Huxtable from The Cosby Show. Hi. Uh, would you mind, please? Oh, sure. This thing is so heavy. No problem. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's one of my tenants there. I know she ain't got slaves just running around her house. Oh, my God. Don't lie to her. That's Harriet Tubman. It's Cicely Tyson. I'm not going to go in too much in her. She damn near 100 years old playing in this movie, so kudos. Claire Huxtable invites Jasmine and Fertitta to have a discussion about Grace. She tells Jasmine that she didn't want Grace to end up lonely like she is, so she encourages her to go out and get some dick. She also calls out Jasmine for being a dumbass. You can take notes? Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Like she knew at that moment her friend is in bad hands. She going to jail. Then it goes into a flashback when Grace's head wasn't fucked up. They're talking about Grace's ex-husband leaving her for another woman. Okay, I am angry. Damn right. She is five years older than my son. It's like he just went on with his life. Like I was some kind of speed bump that just slowed him down. I want my life back. You need to get the hell out of this house and meet somebody. After the flashback, Claire tells Jasmine about how Grace and her new husband had met. Also, Cecily Tyson is on some weird shit. Then Claire oddly rushes Jasmine out of the house. She's probably beating the shit out them old ass ladies. Later that night, she does some more investigating and tells her husband about some of her new discoveries, but he don't know what the hell she's talking about. Then the next morning at work, she tries to tell Tyler Perry about them, but he's still being mean. The woman is pleading guilty. I don't know what you're talking about. I've got the mayor and everybody calling me about this. Sorry, but I found some really great stuff and I think- Jasmine, if you argued like this in court, you could actually be a lawyer. And if you actually combed your shit out, you can get some real bitches. But you want to have that nasty ass salt and peppered ass raccoon on your head. When Grace is about to sign the plea deal, Jasmine pulls out a picture that stuns Grace, which leads her to talking about how she met her now deceased husband. While she was browsing in an art gallery, he sneaks up on her. He's this smooth old nigga or young. I can't tell. You really can't pinboard his age. He could be anywhere between 30 to 50. He got an old face, but he dressed young. They talk about art in Africa. Then she finds out that the artist of this gallery was him. After that, the typical leave the flowers at her workplace shit. It happens and then they finally go on a date. Tell me something. Why did it take you so long to call me? I know you've had many young, beautiful women. I was just wondering, why me? Shouldn't the question be, why not you? See, I told y'all this nigga was smooth, looking like Jermaine Jackson. Anyway, she goes on and talks about her divorce. He won't shut up about himself, but Grace still feeling the vibe. She laughing and shit. I did start to trust him very quickly. I didn't even know that a man could be that perfect, feel that perfect. I didn't want our first date to end. They go on another date. They're walking. I guess grown ass people do that sometimes, but maybe they just trying to stay regular at their age. She's talking about her son. He says some more smooth shit. But like your son, I adored my mother. How do you know he adores me? <laughs> How could he not? See, look at the lips, look at the lips. He wooing the f out her ass right now. You already know. He tries to finesse his way into the house, but Grace ain't going for that shit yet. Then here comes his big ass love montage. She takes a passionate shower. They go to the movies. She falling asleep at work and shit. He buy her a hot dog, ill. He even go to church with her. That nigga wanna fall asleep so bad. Her friend happy she not all depressed anymore. Then he take her where the nutty professor took Janet Jackson to pop the big question. What are you doing? Grace Waters. What are you doing? Are you married? Yes. <laughs> she finally gave up the draws. He takes pictures of her after they had a hard workout. After Grace finishes telling the story, she calls out Jasmine for being a terrible lawyer. You never tried a case. You don't win. You plead. Now give me the damn man. 
Like what the f why you tell her that long ass fairy tale if you wasn't serious about getting out? You just felt like talking, bum? After Grace signs the plea deal, Jasmine is walking in the park with her husband for some reason, talking about not going through with the case anymore and just getting it over with. But in the very next scene, she is begging Grace to finish the rest of the story. And she does. It's another montage. They get married. You know it wouldn't be a Tyler Perry movie without a nigga missing a shirt. And she's just super happy until shit starts to go left. Did you enjoy the fireflies? Who are you talking to? Grace? Yeah? There's two things I don't like. One is being checked up on. And the other is being questioned. Oh my God, like what happened? How can a nigga turn sour so fast? Grace is talking to her friend about whether or not he's cheating on her when her boss and all the other executives of the company call her into a meeting. $379,000 is missing from your accounts. Oh, he's so dirty. Like I just said, what type of nigga can hit a 180 so fast? They just got married. Mr. Clyde, you're I, fired. I, haven't... I want that money, or you're going to jail. Now please leave before I have security escort you out. Grace is all turned up. She hella pissed, calling dude, waiting for this nigga to walk through the door so she can go in on his ass. Her friend is trying to calm her down. He shows up, and this nigga puts on an Oscar winning performance. Where you been? I've been calling you for hours. Did you take her? I heard you on the phone. I was talking to the nurses. I set up this photo shoot with the kids. They have cancer, Grace. I'm not gonna sit here and be a kid. You know what? Fuck this. Wait, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened, but somebody got into my account. They got my passwords. After she apologizes, he stays up with her all night, helping her figure out what happened to the money. Then, some more shit hits the fan. We need to know when you can make the payment on your mortgage. My house has been paid for for over four years. And then you took out a $375,000 mortgage. This can't be right. I think that somebody has stolen my identity. It was notarized. By whom? The address is 2989 Sycamore Street. I went to Sycamore Street, and it was an old abandoned house. You did it. Did what? You went to my bank, and you took out a mortgage on my house. I needed the money, Grace. And I just thought because we're partners, we're married. So I just thought you, I figured that you want me to have it. What? Oh my God. <laughs> it's not funny, but I'm, I'm just mad. Like, how you gonna be, how you gonna come up to this nigga with this type of information and not have a loaded shotgun on your lap? You don't know how he gonna react to this shit. It's mine now. What the fuck are you talking about? And as your lawfully wedded husband, I have every fucking right to that money. So Grace just sits there all sad, talks about how she felt all duped, hoodwinked, and bamboozled. She tries to kick him out, but the nigga don't even budge. He just wants an ashtray. I want you out my house, and I want you out my house now. And I want an ashtray. You keep saying, your house. <clears throat> that marriage license says our house. Ashtray. Ashtray, bitch! She tries to talk to the police, but they don't do shit. She tries to get a lawyer, but they don't do shit either. She goes home to find this nigga body in some random bitch cheeks. He's being very disrespectful. Trying to get your black ass out of my motherfucking house! Get some goddamn locks on this door! Black ass bastard! So you brought me to your mom's house? My mama looked better than that. <laughs> Was I that stupid that I would let this happen? Should've joined us. Shannon continues being an asshole, telling Grace that she owes him the money because of how much joy he brought into her life. And while the nigga is sitting on the couch like a damn mob boss or something, Grace is upset and she, well, just watch. I mean, if you think about it, it's your fucking fault. You made this too easy. Grace, I'm <laughs> So after she turns this nigga's head into ground beef and mashed potatoes, she grabs him by the legs and drops this nigga in the basement. She also confesses that she told her friend Sarah that she killed him, but the body was missing when she went to see. Jasmine pays Sarah another visit to get more details about the case, and Sarah says she thinks Grace's son Malcolm took the body, and Jasmine comes to the conclusion that Grace just wants to protect her son. While she's working, she asks her husband to break the law. Oh babe, when you get to work tomorrow, can you look up Shannon DeLong without anybody noticing? Uh, I really shouldn't do that. Please? Okay, I'll see what I can do. 
Thank you. Like, bro, is her meow that good that she got you breaking the law and shit? You're a police officer. Jasmine tries to tell Tyler Perry big head ass that Grace wants a trial, but he still don't give a fuck and decides to get her to sign the plea himself. Before he gets there, Jasmine convinces Grace to go to trial and he mad as hell. When you lose this case, I promise you, you're fired and your career is over. Later that night, her and her co-workers are working on the case, and Jasmine wants to bring up Sarah as a witness. I need to establish that she's a good person. And what better person to do that than her best friend? Mm. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Okay, let's just start again. This is the third time we've started. Look, there's nothing here. Okay, okay there's well, no smoking gun. This nigga's so annoying. I don't get it. Like, in the beginning of the movie, he was mad that she didn't want to work on the case. Now that they actually putting in some real work, he want to throw a hissy fit? <laughs> Today, we are going to prove that this woman Grace Ann Waters. Oh my God. See, I don't even know who to be mad at more. Should I be mad at Jasmine for not bringing the lady a comb or for her not asking? You have a chance at this time to take Grace Ann Waters off the streets forever. Mrs. Bryant. What the f you going to jail? She already spooked. It just started. Grace Waters is not a cold blooded killer. She's a grandmother. She teaches Sunday school. Just look at her. Look at her. You gonna tell everybody to look at her with her head toe up? She looked like she did it. Grace loved her husband, and she did not cause his disappearance. The trial goes on. Many people are called to the stand and ask questions about the missing body, the blood stains, Grace and Shannon's marriage. After the first day, Jasmine already feels like her back is against the wall, and that she needs to call Sarah up to the stand to help prove Grace's innocence. Can you tell the court about your relationship with Grace? We're best friends. Have you ever seen Grace violent or angry? She's not a violent person, even when she should be. Is Grace capable of murdering someone? She would never hurt anyone. She wouldn't. So would she call you when she was in trouble? No. She wouldn't? I mean, yes. Did she call you the night of August 17th? Uh, uh, yes. What did you talk about? how we were gonna feed the homeless. Dumbass motherfucker. Well then why was your cell phone used and pinged to a cell tower near Grace's home a few moments later? Her phone records show an incoming call from you. Are you covering for her now? No. Then can you please clear up these phone records? I don't remember. Miss Miller, do you understand that you can be put in jail for perjury? You do know what perjury is, right? She told me that she killed him. <gasps> Oh, <laughs> you bitch, you dirty bitch. Why would you say that? So after Sarah says that dumb ass shit, Jasmine rests her defense. And you already know Tyler Perry gotta be an asshole. Well, how could you miss the phone records? I didn't see them and I was just completely overwhelmed. Was... Oh, well, you didn't see them, I saw them. You know what you just did? This is 101, you let a witness leave the stand saying that your client was a murderer. I guess it's a millennial thing. I'll never understand it. I don't understand why you came to court without a lineup. You look homeless as shit in that suit. You look like you signed up for a rehabilitation program, you dirty bitch. After Tyler Perry goes in on Jasmine for being a dumbass, she is devastated. And now she hate dinner for some reason. Man, come on, just eat a little bit. Please, come on. I don't want it. Who are you, my father? I don't want it. But you heard the way he talked to me. Why didn't you say something? She made a lot of good points. Truth is hard to get, but it can make you strong if you just let it. You saw the jury. What am I supposed to do? Supposed to do your job, babe. I'm serious. The job you were born to do. That's uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did y'all hear that shit? The nigga voice crack. That's why he be letting her ass get yelled at. The nigga still going through puberty. It is your job to find her guilty, and we have the utmost faith in you and our legal system that you will. After the prosecution gives that fire ass closing statement, it's now the defense's turn. But Jasmine ain't going for that shit. She calls Sarah back up to the stand and the judge tells her she can't do that, but she don't care. So she calls her up again and again, pissing off the judge so he tosses her ass in jail. And guess who came to talk shit? So what the hell was that? This is unfair. All of this is unfair. The law can be unfair, but it was your job to walk into that courtroom and make it fair. Enjoy your time here. Hey, Rory. Yeah? Fuck you. You should have been told him that shit. It took you way too long for you to grow some balls. We, the jury, find Grace Waters, the defendant, guilty of murder. <laughs> Somebody teach this nigga how to cry. Why he ain't take no class? While Grace is trying to comfort her son's fake ass crying, she notices that Sarah is wearing the same necklace her ex-husband had when she met him. Then she starts recalling shit from the past, like her computer being open when he was taking pictures of her, Sarah rubbing her hand against him. She should have said some shit right there. Why didn't she? What? God! 
Your lawyer in jail, you can't call shit. After Jasmine is released, she decides to pay Sarah a visit so they can both cry about Grace losing the trial. And on her way there, she notices Cicely Tyson's ass on the run, and she seems very reluctant to go back into Sarah's house. I would also like to mention how great this woman looks at 95 years old. You can tell she stayed away from processed foods and fuck niggas her entire life. You're at Miss Sarah's house, that's where you live. I'm gonna go to my own house. My house is two, two, nine, eight, Nine, Sycamore Street. I don't want to die here like, like Gloria and, and Brenda. Miss Tyson goes on about how she doesn't want to be trapped there and die like the others. One of them being the white lady at the beginning of the movie that jumped off the roof. Jasmine starts to put bits and pieces of Grace's story together, then she hears something downstairs. She goes to investigate telling Cicely Tyson to stay put. Get the fuck out of here. She was halfway down the street, but you brought her ass back. She's 95 years old. You know how long that walk is? At the same time, her husband is making an arrest, and one of his fellow officers tell him to look at his computer. Stay right here. Don't move. Nigga, you got all the way in the car. He could dip like a motherfucker. He looked like a pretty fast nigga, too. You might want to <laughs> crack the window or something. And on his computer pops up hella mug shots of Sarah, and he just dropped his wife off to that crazy bitch house. So he dips, leaving this nigga he just arrested in cuffs. Hopefully that nigga wasn't a pedophile or nothing like that. I'm going to just say that nigga was trying to steal some candy or something from the vending machine. Nigga, this is a second chance from God, my nigga. Human trafficking is not funny, but that shit, you know it stink down there. Some people never learn, do they? My mom was talking to you. Yes, hello. I'm looking for my wife, Jasmine Bryant. She was representing your friend, Grace Waters. She said she was going to come by here. Oh, well, I haven't seen her. If you don't have a warrant, you can't come in. I told you, she's not here. Are you serious? You better not let her old ass beat you up. Okay, don't move. Stay right here. See, this is what I mean by this nigga's terrible. Stay right here. The bitch feet still free. You need to tie that bitch up like cattle if you don't want her to move. Jasmine! I just want to let you know your husband ain't shit. He need to be demoted to your boyfriend. That nigga almost got his ass whooped by that old ass lady. And this nigga was about to get beat up by this handicapped ass nigga that got hit in the head with a bat 13 times. So after all this craziness, we find out that Sarah and Shannon, which aren't their real names, have been kidnapping old women for their wealth and social security for over 25 years. And with the new evidence, of course the judge has to set Grace Waters free. And everybody's happy and hugging. Tyler Perry is low key still hating. So it's a happy ending, right? Wow. They hit us with the most weakest cliche ending in the history of mankind. At present, Sarah Miller, rather Betty Mills, is still on the run. Well, come. I want you to meet my mother. Oh, I'd like that. She was a manager for 10 years. Oh, my. Impressive. Yeah, that's right. This bitch is still on the loose because Mr. Officer didn't want to lock her shit up right. I would have had her ass handcuffed to the refrigerator. Bet she wouldn't have moved. Did y'all enjoy that? I hope you did, kinda, you know. The thing about this movie is that it's not really a good movie, but the twist catches some people off guard, so you know, I guess that's just like the main point of the, the shit, you know? But anyway, I hope they don't make another one of these, cause <laughs> this shit's not gonna, no, no, no. Like, comment, subscribe, hit my cash app if you want, give a nigga some bread, give a nigga a little bit of cheese, you know? Have a good day.